So, hello there, and welcome back to another Night of the Movies podcast. I'm Spike Knight, and in these podcasts, I like talking all things movies and TV, and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I'm discussing The Outlaws Series 1, 2, 3. But, before I do that, I want to quickly say that I went swimming earlier today, and people who subscribe to the channel will know what I'm about to say here. When I go swimming early in the day, I get this thing that I like to call fuzzy thinking, which is basically where my thinking is affected throughout the rest of the day. It's just what swimming does to me. So if at one point in this podcast I don't make complete sense, it's because I went swimming early today and it just affects the way I think throughout the rest of the day. So that is why. And also it's hay fever time of the year. And I get hay fever quite badly. So if I sound bummed up and if I'm sniffling throughout this podcast, that is why as well. Because I have hay fever quite badly right now. But Other than that, this should be a great and fun podcast to listen to and or watch. So, let's get into it, shall we? The Outlaws, Series 1, 2, 3. So, The Outlaws was created by Elgin James and Stephen Merchant. And Stephen Merchant seems to be the driving force behind this series. Not only is he a co-creator on the series... And not, and not only is he one of the main writers on the series, and not only did he direct some of the episodes in the first series of this show, he's also one of the stars in this series too. And because he was the driving force behind the series, I was interested in seeing it, as I love his work before this show. He was a co-creator and co-writer on the original UK version of The Office, which is the superior version of The Office, which is the best version of The Office in my in my opinion. I know most people prefer the US version of The Office and Steve Merchant was still involved in that show as well. You think he directed a couple episodes and he helped the first season of that show come to life but at the same time though the first the original UK version of The Office is the superior version because it it's far more real. It feels far more real to watch. It's got that cringeworthy humor, which I love, and I absolutely adore it. And then after co-creating The Office with Rick Gervais, him and Rick Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Rick Gervais, went on to co-create and co-write the TV comedy Extras, which is another one of my favorite comedies of all time. And the thing is about Extras and The Office, they are both great dramedies. They both are great dramas and comedies at the same time. And that's what The Outlaws looked like it was going to be in its trailers when the when the trailers of the first series started to come out, all the way back in 2021, that's when the series first began, it gave the impression that it was Merchant doing another comedy drama. Like, there was going to be all these funny Stephen Merchant... Or there's going to be all this funny Stephen Merchant kind of humour in there, but there was also going to be a lot of dra- dramatic moments. And that was the thing which really drew me to it, because it looked like it was following in the footsteps of Merchant's earlier work with Gervais. And also, alongside Gervais, Steve Merchant also co-created and co-wrote the Warwick Davis-led sitcom Life's Too Short, which I haven't seen all of, but I have seen, I really enjoyed, particularly an episode with Liam Neeson, which is absolutely laugh-out-loud hilarious. And they also co-wrote and co-directed the 2010 film Cemetery Junction together which is absolutely wonderful I love that movie it's not a masterpiece by any means but it's absolutely wonderful to watch it's a hidden gem of a movie and it just fills you with joy and Steve Merchant hasn't worked with Rick Gervais since about 2013 but in 2019, Stephen Merchant, I think, co-wrote and directed the film Fighting With My Family, which is a brilliant movie, in my opinion, and does not get enough love. And this was his follow-up to Fighting With My Family. I mean, it's not a sequel to Fighting With My Family by any means, and it doesn't have any similarities to that film. But this series, The Outlaws, was Steve Merchant's follow-up to Fighting With My Family, and that was another reason I was interested in seeing it. And when the series first came out in 2021, I was very interested in it. 
And then I didn't watch it when it initially aired. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I think I was telling myself at the time when the series initially came out that I was busy. So I waited a couple of months to check out this show. And by the time I checked it out on BBC iPlayer, by the time I binged watched it, I don't really like using that word, but I seem to use it quite a lot on my review. So by the time I binged watched the series, series two was right around the corner. It was like coming out within a couple of weeks. So I really watched the first two seasons of this show together, the way they were shot, because the first two seasons of this show were shot back to back. But anyway, I remember watching the first series and I was kind of blown away by what I was experiencing because I really didn't expect much. I expected to have a good time watching the show, but I didn't expect to fall in love with it the way I did. I absolutely adored the first series of this show. I could not believe how much fun I was having with it and how funny it was. I hadn't laughed that much at a comedy in years and at the same time how dramatic it was as well. How emotionally engaged I was with the show and I loved the premise of this show, the whole idea of this, you know, the whole idea of somebody who is involved with gangs wanting to leave Bristol and so he steals some money and hides it at this community centre where he's doing community service and the other people that he's doing community service with find the money he stole and spend it but the person he stole the money from wants it all back but when the guy who stole the money goes to get it back he can't because it's not there because the people he's been doing community service with have spent it and then things just get more and more convoluted but not in a <laughs> things just get more and more messy that's what I was meant to say there things get more and more messy for the main characters as the series goes on from there I probably explained the premise of the show really badly there but that is essentially the premise there's this character we follow he's involved with gangs and he wants to leave Bristol though to get away from these gangs he steals some money but then when he steals some money he hides it somewhere where other people find it they think it's some money that somebody's left there so they there's got no association to them whatsoever so they start spending it but then the person that the guy stole the money from wants it back and things derail from there and everything gets so much more complicated and it's a very layered show in in the way it writes its characters and in the way it writes its story and I could not believe how much I was into it because I loved the story and I loved how it developed and I loved all the characters as well. You have the main character Ran who has this life that has been made from her that had been made for her but she wants to break away from it and then you get this character called Ben who is involved with these gangsters but wants to protect his sister at the same time he wants to get away from Bristol but he still keeps getting involved with these gangsters and then you get this character called Greg played by Stephen Merch in the show um, who is this hilariously bad lawyer who <laughs> isn't really great at his job at all and isn't it's and is always struggling at life it seems but then he meets lady gabby and they start this platonic relationship together where she brings him out of his shell and then you get lady gabby this struggling addict who has been with someone for quite a long time but now they've broken up and she's and she's still trying to get over that person and she has this complicated relationship with her father and her father is played by richard e grant in the show and he's i think he's the earl of gloucester in the show which is quite, which is something great casting for Richard E. Grant as well anyway yeah and you get Lady Gabby and you get her storyline and I love her relationship with Greg in the show I think that's one of the highlights of this series overall and continuing on with other characters in this series you get the character John who's in this emotionally abusive relationship with his father his father's a nasty piece of work anyway yeah you get that character in the series he's got so much to him and then you get this character called Myrna who's fighting for everything possible in Bristol but you also see is very lonely and doesn't have many friends because he pushes all these people away from her then you get this character called Diane who oversees the community service which the main characters do and Diane tries a little too hard and she's over the top but she's also kind of lovable and then you get this character played by Christopher Walken in the series 
Yes, Christopher Walken, Hollywood star, is in this show, and he plays a character called Frank, who had this crazy past, but now he's gone to live with his estranged daughter in Bristol, and he tries to connect with her in the first two series of this show, and he tries to connect with his grandchildren as well, who he doesn't really know. And so you get this, these great main characters and on top of that you get some really great supporting characters as well such as christian taylor who is a gangster who is a gangster because he needs to make money for his family he's the only person who earns money for his family after his father went ill and you also get the character ds lucy haynes who is a police officer who's trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with this money what's going on with all these gangs in bristol but it's always one step behind of everybody even though she's fantastic Fantastic at her job. All the characters are brilliantly written, not only the main characters, but also the supporting characters. I loved it. in the, watching the first series of this show, I couldn't believe how much I fell in love with all the characters and how well written they, they were. There was so much to them. You know, the things I've even mentioned <laughs> which were so interesting about them. And yeah, God, I loved every single character in the show. And I love they didn't feel messy as well because you follow about, what, seven or eight main characters? And the show never, ever felt messy and it felt like it perfectly balanced these characters. And another reason I really, 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 really loved the first series of this show was because it did the Edgar Wright thing. You know, Edgar Wright has directed such films as Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, The World's End, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, Baby Driver, and most recently Last Night in Soho. And he also starts the TV show Spaced. And Edgar Wright is known for directing films which are set in the mundane, which are set in, you know, normal everyday life, but making it seem exciting at the same time. And although Edgar Wright, at least as far as I know, has no connections to this show whatsoever, this show feels like it, ha it takes a lot of inspiration from Edgar Wright in that it makes the mundane feel exciting. <laughs> it's uh, essentially an action comedy drama series set in Bristol and that shouldn't work. On paper that sounds like a horrible idea, kind of like Hot Fuzz sounds like, you know, it's an action movie in a small British town but then Hot Fuzz is one of my favourite movies of all time because it works so damn well and I do feel this show has similarities with Hot Fuzz in that it shouldn't work. This comedy action, um, uh, what am I trying to say here? This comedy action drama series, what's what I'm trying to get to there, yeah, you know, swimming's get it to me. This comedy action drama series set in Bristol that is actually surprisingly fantastic. You know, I, that's why I think it shares some lines with Hot Fuzz. And Stephen Merchant even had a cameo in Hot Fuzz. You know, he played the person who was looking for his swan in one of the best cameos in any movie, in my opinion. Anyway, yeah, I, I love this show too because I'm a huge fan of Edgar Wright and this series felt like it was following in the footsteps of Edgar Wright in doing the Edgar Wright thing by making the mundane stuff feel exciting. And so you get the point. I loved series one of the show and I loved series two as well. Series two wasn't quite as good and I rewatched series one and two before series three came out recently and I did feel series two had a little a little step down in quality not a big step down but a little step down but i did love how it tied everything up in this conclusive way and i love the ending to series two it felt like a natural end and it worked really well so i was surprised to say the least in fact i was pretty damn shocked when series three of this show was announced about a year ago now by stephen merchant and <sighs> One half of me was deliriously excited because this is honestly one of my favourite TV shows I've seen over the past couple of years. It, I, I love it so, so much. You've you probably already got that already. You, yeah, you've understood that how much I love this series. So one half of me was deliriously excited because The Outlaws was continuing. But another half of me was a bit like, why? Because the show ended in such a conclusive way. You didn't need to carry it on. And I was a bit worried that if they were going to carry the series on, that it would just feel like they're doing it for the sake of money. Just because, hey look, we can I can continue on this show because it's 
successful and it earns us all money. I just, I didn't feel like it needed to be continued. However, I was holding out hope. I was more hopeful because Stephen Merchant, if you look at his work in the past, particularly in TV, he doesn't usually do three series of a TV show. Usually it ends it after two series. He only did two series and a Christmas special of The Office. He only did two series of a Christ of extras and a Christmas special with that show. You know, and with Life's Too Short, I think they did two series and a Easter special with that. So he doesn't usually do more than three series. And I know he did those shows with, with Rick Gervais as well, but then Rick Gervais recently, he just did three series of Afterlife. So maybe they're changing their ways and I thought that this, as far as I know, because this is Stephen Merchant's first time doing a third series of a TV show, perhaps he actually has a story to tell. Perhaps that's why he's doing a third series because I just thought Stephen Merchant isn't usually the sort of person who would drag out a TV show past its off day, you know what I mean? So I was hopeful because I thought if Stephen Merchant wanted to do a third series of The Outlaws, it's because he had a story to tell. And after watching the third series of this show, I can confirm that is the case. Because I absolutely loved series three. I adored it. Now, I don't think it's as good as series one, and I did miss Christopher Walken in this third series. He does make a cameo in episode three, and it's a really funny cameo at that, but I did miss him in this series, and I missed him because he was such an instantly attractive element of series one. You're instantly drawn to him because it's Christopher Walken in a British show co-created by Stephen Merchant. That's something you don't usually get to see on TV. You don't usually get to see a BBC show with Christopher Walken in. But he was in the first series of the show and you're into Johnson because he was Christopher Walken in the series and because the character was also so well written. The character had so much tune which was compelling and I really loved the relationship with him and his daughter in the first two series. And you don't get that in this series and you don't get to see his daughter or his daughter's family at all because Christopher Walken is barely in series three of this show. And I do think this show had a Christopher Walken hole in it. This The third series of the show, should I say, had a Christopher Walken hole in it because he was such a brilliant character in series one and two and he's barely in series three. And I feel you feel it a little bit. Not a huge amount, but before he made his cameo appearance, I was missing him. I was like, what if Christopher Walken was here though? Because... You know, his character was so fun to watch. I loved his interaction with all the other characters in the show, and I feel he would just be making this so much better. That being said, he wouldn't be making it loads better, actually. I take back what I just said. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be making it so much better if he was there. He would just be making it a tad bit better, because in the absence, in the almost complete absence of Christopher Walken in Series 3, everybody steps up their game. The writing steps up the, its game, as does the acting, as does the performances, as does everybody on screen, as does everybody who's involved in the show. It feels like in the absence of Christopher Walken, they actually made, I think, the best season of The Outlaws since Season 1, and they made it the funniest season yet. And I loved that they made it the funniest season yet because you still got those you still got those dramatic moments, those emotionally engaging moments which you got from series one and two. But also, I think this is the best series since the first series, and I love the first series to pieces. So, I I, I also don't think any series of the Outlaws post series one were ever gonna get past series one for me because you know we were ever gonna triumph series one because series one it was just <laughs> watching it for the first time was. You know, such an experience that I won't ever forget. But Series 3, I think, is the best series since Series 1 because it's the funniest series. I love this third series of The Outlaws because you had characters like Rani, Ben and Myrna who weren't really the funniest of characters in the first two series who were who were given a lot of funny moments to shine in this series. And I loved that. It was, it was so much more funnier to watch than Series 2 was. And I'm not dissing Series 2. I loved Series 2. But at the same time, Series 2 felt like it was leaning more on the dramatic side than Series 1 was. While Series 3... 
it balances the dramedy aspect so well the dramedy of it all you know the comedy and the drama of it all you still have those dramatic moments but also you've got those funny moments and you have those funny moments in spades and when the funny moments come boy are they so funny to watch i was watching the first episode of series three with my family and we all just couldn't stop laughing from like one scene to the next. I thought the rest of the series was just as funny. Right, so this is an add-on. Something I wanted to mention when I was initially recording this podcast, but I remembered to mention as soon as I finished recording the podcast, uh, but I wanted to put here anyway, and that is this. I really love how this series of The Outlaws gives each of its main characters their time to shine. You know, not to say the last two series didn't, the last two series did that so well. The last two series gave each of the characters their moments to shine, and this series does that even more so. Like in the last two series, my favourite characters were Greg, Lady Gabby and Christopher Wilkins character Frank because they had the most moments to shine in my opinion whilst in this series it feels like the moments to shine are a bit more um, equally uh, laid out, you know what I mean? It feels like even the less the characters which I thought weren't as good in the last two series are given more moments to shine here and are given more funny and comedic stuff to do as well, which I really like. And not to say that the characters that were the funniest, like Greg and Lady Gabby in the last two series, aren't as funny in this series. No, they are. They are just as funny as they were in the last two series. In fact, I'd even argue Steve Merchant's character Greg is even funnier here, but so is the but so are the other characters um, that are around him, which weren't as funny in the last two series. And I really love how each character has given their moments to shine. And it's... It's also just a really refreshing show. It's got this refreshing feel to it because of how unique and how different it is to any other TV show I've seen over the past couple of years. And that might be why it doesn't really work for any, everybody and it seems to have a very cult following. I might be wrong there. Maybe it has a bigger following than I realise. But from what I've gathered online, this show seems to, be, seems to have a cult following. And maybe that's because it is not for everybody because... It's a unique and it's a different kind of TV series. But I love that about it. I love how well written it is. How compelling the storylines and the overall narrative is. But also how absolutely fun absolutely laugh out loud hilarious it is and how it is just a really great dramedy it's a brilliant dramedy even because it perfectly balances comedy and drama and it's exciting as well which you don't get to say about many tv series like this it's got it it's it's got this refreshing feel to it each character has the moment to shine and it's also unique in it in all the best ways and that is another reason i absolutely love it anyway back to the podcast and back to me rambling on about this show and at the same time the stakes are higher in the series than they've ever been in the outlaws before and you feel that when you're watching it rani now is a wanted criminal and you yeah you feel that when you watch it the dean this horrible um crime lord is trying to get revenge for what the outlaws, the gang of misfits that we follow, did to him in series two. And the way he's trying to get revenge is, um, it's doing them over quite well. And you follow John, who is trying to take down his emotionally abusive father in this series. And that's quite, that's quite an emotional storyline to watch. You'd seen, you watch John, his character's having this downfall in this series. And yeah, and that, that storyline is quite emotionally engaging to watch in this series. And on top of that, you've got Lady Gabby in this series of The Outlaws suing her father, played by Richard E. Grant. And with all that going on, you feel that the stakes are higher. And I love that the stakes were higher because it made this series feel more grand and it made it feel more like, yeah, this would be the natural... You know, this would be how everything would evolve in the story of these characters. I loved how every how the stakes were higher. I loved how this was the funniest series yet because characters who weren't really funny in the previous series were getting their time to shine uh, comedy-wise in the series. And also, it was the funniest series yet because there was a lot of physical comedy, which usually wouldn't work for me at all. But 
particularly in the first two episodes, the physical comedy. They're trying to move this dead body at one point, the main character which we follow, and it's some of the funniest TV I've seen in such a long while. Just thinking about it now brings a huge smile to my face. And this series, as the last two series were, is brilliantly directed. It's very well written with twists that I did not see coming, and it left me with a huge grin on my face. Even though I thought the last episode wasn't the best. I liked the last episode quite a lot, but I felt there were a couple of things which could have been done better. And I didn't... I didn't love the last scene of this... of Series 3. I thought it was good, I just didn't love it. I wish I loved it, like I loved the last scene of Series 2. Still, I think this was a very good series. And I think if it is the end of the Outlaws, you know what? They've gone out with a bang. That being said, I have a feeling it's not the end of the Outlaws. It's just a feeling this, you know. I haven't heard this, I haven't read this anywhere. But I've got a feeling that Steve Merchant is going to continue the Outlaws for a series 4 and end it there. And my biggest reason for thinking that is because the main group of characters, with the exception of Lady Gabby, who they make a point of, is not doing, communi is not doing community service in this show anymore. With the exception of her, the main characters which we follow are still all doing community service. And I think Stephen Merchant left the point that the characters are still doing community service at the end of this series on purpose. Put it this way, I think if the characters complete a community service at the end of this series with the Outlaws, I'd be like, okay, this is the final series. But they didn't. And that because he left that open, and because he left a couple of other threads open in this season the outlaws i don't know i've just got this feeling that they're gonna do another series maybe i'm wrong maybe i and in a year's time i'll be proven wrong and then steven merchant comes out and says you know what the outlaws ended with series three and i was super happy with, with what i did with that series but i don't know i've just got this feeling that a series four is going to happen but at the same time if it doesn't now like what he mentioned I do think Series 3 went out with a bang. And yet again, the characters are all so well written. There's so many layers to them, which is something I really love about the characters in this show. You think you know a character, but then you actually realise that they're not what they see. And I really love the way this show is written. I love the way it's directed. I love how intense it gets in parts. I love how hilarious it gets in parts as well. This is one of the if not the, actually, this, this is the funniest comedy I've watched um, over the past couple of years. The funniest comedy TV show I've watched over the past couple of years. But it's not just a straight-up comedy show, though. It's also, it's a, got all this action going on in it. And the action sequences, I think, are well done. And it's got all these dramatic, emotional stuff going on in it as well. Which I think is all really well done. I, I love it. I know it's not for everybody. And I've seen some reviews being a bit sniffy on the outlaws. But I just don't get it. I don't get what people don't get from this show. It, it's one of those series that every single time I think about it, and every single time I go back to watch clips from it or just rewatch an episode, I am smiling from ear to ear because of how good the writing is, because of how much emo because of how emotionally engaged I get with it all, and because of how damn entertaining it is. This is a wildly entertaining piece of TV, and in the end. That's why it works for me so, so, so much. And Series 3 was no exception. Yeah, Series 3 was another banger from this show. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that The Outlaws, overall, I'm going to say that this show is a 9 out of 10. If I was to individually rate each series, I'd say that Series 1 is a... You know what, I'm going to give Series 1 a 10 out of 10. I'd say Series 2 is a 8.5 is an 8.5 out of 10. Still, again, a fantastic season of television. I just had a little 
we got a little quibbles here and there with certain things that happen in that series, uh, particularly with the way they're trying to tie things up. And series three, I would give a nine out of ten. So overall, the average, you know, it's a nine out of ten. I think The Outlaws is one of the best TV shows that have come out of the past couple of years. And yes, I am comparing it alongside the likes of House of the Dragon, The Bear, um, The Boys, um, The Last of Us, Succession. Yes, I'm comparing it alongside all those shows, and I. Guess what? I think it's <laughs> just as good and even better than some of those series I've mentioned. I like House of the Dragon series one quite a lot. Guess what? I think The Outlaws is better. There you go. Unpopular opinion, but I don't care. It's my opinion because I love this series. So brilliant. Yes, it's got all the serious and dramatic stuff which makes it so compelling to watch. But it's also so much fun to watch and it makes you grin from it where which shows like Succession and House of the Dragon and Last of Us, as good as they are, don't always do. And so if you can hear some sound effects just sound. You know, as good as those shows are, they don't make you grin from it to it. At least most of the time they don't. Whilst this show always left me feeling fulfilled and always left me with a smile on my face. And that's another reason I really, really love it. Steven Merchant did it again with his series. Did it again with each one of these series of Outlaws. You know. <sighs> it's absolutely incredible. And, um... I shouldn't expect less from Steven Merchant. I listened to his, uh podcasts that he did with Rick Gervais and Carl Pilkinson back in the day, daily. I listen to those podcasts, the Rick Gervais podcast daily, I listen to them religiously, they're a huge part of my life, and I think Stephen Merchant is the funniest person on the podcast. And I, I think Rick Gervais is a very funny person, as do I with Carl Pilkinson, but Stephen Merchant, I think, is the funniest of them three. And with him being the driving force of this series, why am I not surprised that it works? so well because I do I, I I think he is a yeah I'm gonna say it I think he's a genius I think he's a genius and making TV shows and films in the dramedy genre work so well and another one last thing I'm gonna mention about the Outlaw series 3 is it continues that trend that it did in series 1 and 2 of making the mundane feel exciting making the normal everyday things feel so much more exciting than they actually are. And that's something I have always thought about the Outlaws and that's something I continue to adore. Uh, something I, that's something I continue to adore about the Outlaws in series three. Yeah. I love this series to pieces and I can't recommend it enough. It's on Prime Video, it's on BBC iPlayer and I, I think you're missing out if you're not watching it. Yeah, it's one of my favorite TV shows over the past couple of years. I absolutely love it. And so, all in all, as what he said, and as I'm going to say once more in this podcast today, The Outlaws Series 1, 2, 3, I would 9 out of 10 from me. Hey, that rhymed. Anyway, guys, that's it for today's podcast. If you have seen The Outlaws, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. Maybe you loved it like I do, or maybe you think the show just isn't that great. Whatever your thoughts are on this series of The Outlaws and on the show overall, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. And if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like and subscribe on this podcast. I look forward to many more podcasts coming very, very soon on this channel. As what he said, thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast. And I suppose this is it. So I will see you guys again soon. But bye for now. Bye.